you are who you hang out with. Even if you're trying to do the right thing, like Carlito was, the people that he was hanging with drew him back into doing the wrong thing. Hey everyone, welcome to another sit down with Michael Francis. It is Monday, February 15th, the day after Valentine's Day. Hope everybody had a great day yesterday. Uh, Valentine's Day is one of those, I don't know, I don't know where the holiday came from, but it's a good day whenever you can spread love around to the people that you care about and that you love, that's a good thing. So I hope you had a great day yesterday. And today, as always, is a, uh, a favorite of all of you tuning in. It's Mob Movie Monday. Got a great one for you today. Carlito's Way. And I've been waiting a while to, uh, to talk about this a movie I loved. Uh, a lot of messages in this movie that some people should be able to relate to. Those of you that maybe came out of a difficult situation, trying to transform your life, turn your life around. Uh, this is a movie that, um, well, I can only tell you this, Carlito did a lot of things that you shouldn't do when you're trying to transform your life around, when you came out of a criminal lifestyle. But it was a great movie. Pacino, as always, was great. Sean Penn, who is not really one of my favorite actors, he was great in this movie. He played a CD lawyer. Did you ever hear of that? But uh, he did a great job, and everybody did. I mean, it was a good movie. So we're going to go scene by scene. I'm going to tell you again some of my favorite scenes, and I'll describe why they were my favorite scenes. But, um, you know, what I want to do is give me my overall perspective on this film. You know, just a summary of it. Carlito, um, he was a Puerto Rican guy um, who was in New York back in the 70s. And uh, he was a drug dealer at one point in time. And, you know, I was on the street during that time, didn't know many Puerto Ricans back then. You know, my, my involvement with Puerto Ricans, believe it or not, goes back further than that when I was a kid. My grandmother, my mother's uh, mother, had a shop in the garment district, rather, and she had a lot of Puerto Rican seamstresses working for her. Wonderful people. I would go up and visit every once in a while. My grandmother would take me there when I was a kid. They were just wonderful people, very warm, you know, always treated me good, you know, you know, kind of like of Italians in that way. But, you know, th they were great. And, you know, it's unfortunate. Those hardworking people in any ethnic group, they always seem to have resentment for those in that same ethnicity that choose to get on the street and, you know, uh, get involved in criminal activity. We have it, you know, a lot of Italians resent the mafia, I'm sure. Uh, a lot of Jews resent some of the Jews that, you know, got involved in criminal activity and on and on and on. Just the way it is. But all in all, wonderful people, very warm. There was a lot of Puerto Ricans came to the United States and, and uh, certainly uh, migrated to New York at that point in time. On the street, never really got involved with any of the Puerto Ricans. Again, you know, I know I have to say this again, we didn't get involved and drugs, at least we weren't supposed to. So I didn't deal with any of them on that level. But let's get into the movie. You know, first scene, the opening scene was, uh, w was really terrific. And I'm talking about the one where Carlito, who was released from prison, the uh, uh, higher court overturned a conviction that he had gotten for drugs. Uh, he was sentenced to 30 years in prison. And uh, the conviction was overturned because the prosecutor presented illegal evidence into the case. Um, I think it was in wiretaps. He did it illegally. So there's Carlito. He's in the court. His lawyer, Sean Penn, is with him, Carlito being Pacino. And he's uh, making a statement to the court. And basically, he's thanking the court. He's saying, I am reformed. And I didn't have to do it in 30 years because that was his sentence. He's telling this to the judge. I reformed myself in five years, not 30 years, uh, like you wanted me to. So he thanks the judge for that. And he thanks uh, the prosecutor for illegally admitting evidence into the case that allowed the Supreme Court or the upper court, I should say, to overturn it. So it's a great scene the way he admonishes them. And uh, the judge, you can see, is upset. And obviously, the prosecutor is upset. And the judge says, we don't need this whole speech. And then reluctantly, he dismisses the indictment. Carlito is now a free man. He hugs his attorney. He thanks his attorney, Sean Penn, who stood by his side and got him out of a number of cases, it seems. I think he went to trial a couple of times, and he had beaten some cases in advance. And Sean Penn was the one that hung in this and finally got the conviction overturned. So it's a great scene. You got to watch it. My favorite scene in the movie, actually. 
And then we move on. So now Carlito's out on the streets, got to start his life up all over again. So what does he do? He was a pretty well-known guy at that time. He had a good reputation on the street with other guys. And one of his old friends, I forget who plays the role, but I think Pachanga was his name in the movie. Brilliant actor. You've seen him many, many times. He was in a movie called Q&A with Armand DeSante that I loved. He played another, you know, Puerto Rican guy on the street, but he's terrific. And, uh, you know, he's, uh, hey, uh, Carlito, great to have you back again. And, you know, so they're doing that whole thing. He's starting to see some of his friends. Next scene, he's kind of walking in the neighborhood and one of his old associates gets a hold of him. And this scene kind of, you know, hit home to me too. And he sits down with this guy, a drug dealer, still into the business. And um, the drug dealer is saying, hey, you know what? You're out of prison. I'm happy for you. And uh, thank you for not hurting me. You could have hurt me. You could have snitched on me, but you didn't. And I really appreciate it. You did your time like a man. He's telling Carlito. But then he says, uh, you know, you probably heard that I'm doing really well. I'm making a lot of money. And you don't think you're entitled to any of this money now. This is what he tells Carlito. And, uh, you know, so typical, you know, nobody wants to spread the money around. Yeah, thank you. You stood up and all of that, but that's on you. You're supposed to stand up. Don't expect anything for it. In some ways, I relate that to my dad. My dad stood up, you know, did 40 years in prison, never opened his mouth, but really nobody gave him anything when he came out as a result of that. People think, oh, you know, they're throwing money at you. They take care of your families. It's not so. That's not what the street life is all about. Trust me on that. So uh, anyway, Carlito says to him, look, I don't want anything from you. I'm out. I'm done. I'm finished. I'm not getting back into this life. It's over for me. But, you know, again, a scene that I can relate to in some ways. And then Carlito says something that uh, as a result of this meeting that he had with this guy, and he says, you know, there ain't no friends in this shit business. To a large degree, that's true. You know, when you're on the street and you're hustling for money and you're doing things and, you know, a lot of criminal stuff going on, you don't have too many friends, especially when the hits the fan. You don't, because then everybody starts to worry about themselves. Not all the time. It's not always that way. There are plenty of people that stand up, but it is kind of a dog-eat-dog world on the street. Trust me on that. And then he says something that's very telling. He says, you know, I don't invite this stuff. It just comes to me. In other words, he's trying to get himself out of that life, but it's still coming at him. And why? One of the biggest mistakes that he made. You come out, you want to try to change your life around. You don't go back to the same neighborhood. You don't start associating with the same people that you hung out before. You don't put yourself back into the lion's den. That's the biggest mistake that Carlito made. You know, when I walked away from that life, people, I knew there's no way I could go back to New York. And it's a message that I give young kids. It's the message that I've given, you know, a lot of people in law enforcement, uh, sheriff's departments that brought me in to speak to a lot of these juveniles that get themselves in trouble, you know, gangbangers. And I tell them, you just can't tell these kids, you know, to do the right thing and then allow them to go back into the same neighborhood that they came out of. Dangerous for them. They're around the same element. They can't walk away and be in the same neighborhood. It doesn't happen that way. You want to make a break, you got to make a break. I mean, it's cold turkey. You got to go, man. That's the only way you're going to survive. Putting yourself back into the lion's den, big mistake. And that was the biggest mistake that Carlito made. And you see that throughout the movie. So now you got Carlito, he's starting to make a plan, you know, how's he going to really walk away from this life? What does he want to do? And basically, he wants to acquire 75 grand. He wants to make it legitimately, don't want to go back into the drug business, but he wants to get 75,000. He figures that's enough for him to make a break, get away from the neighborhood and turn his life around. Another big mistake he makes, he connects with a cousin of his and he finds out they're in the car driving and his cousin tells him that he's doing collections now. And he's, he's making deals where he's bringing money to drug dealers, picking up the drugs and delivering it to the buyer. And uh, he's in the car with Carlito and Carlito's telling him, what are you doing this stuff for? Anyway, he's going to make a buy. He's got 30 grand in his pocket. He's going to pick up some drugs from, a, from another dealer. He says, Carlito, come with me. Carlito says, man, I don't want to do that. He says, no, please come with me. You know, you got the name, the reputation. I walk in the door with you. I'm somebody. This is what he's saying. Carlito doesn't want to go, but that's his kid cousin. What happens? He gives in. Big mistake. So he goes in. They're in kind of a, a, a club, like a pool hall. And uh, you can tell right away that something's going down. It's not going to be right. Now, Carlito's instincts come up, and he's seeing that this situation isn't right, but he's there already. His cousin goes in the back room with the main guy to make the buy. Anyway, it's a whole setup. They're looking to rip this guy off for the 30 grand. Now, Carlito is there. It's getting bad. He's trying to figure out, you know, how to best deal with the situation that he knows is going to go down. 
Long story short, they try to rip him off. The guy kills his cousin. They slit his throat and a whole gunfight ensues. And Carlito kills a couple of the guys. Very, very fortunate for him, he ends up getting out of the club and nobody knows what happened, but bad situation. Why would you go with your cousin on a drug deal when you're trying to transform your life and turn your life around? I'll tell you why. It's so hard when you're trying to break that mentality that you had, when you feel you owe something to a friend. And so many things that I have told these young people, you know, if you're looking to get out of that life, you don't owe anybody anything that wants you to do something wrong. Because if they're really your friend, they're going to try to keep you out of it. You know, there was times when I was in prison and I hung around with some of the guys and they would look at some of the sports figures and they'd say, you know what? This guy came out of the hood. He owes me something. When I got out of jail, he made it good. He's going to have to, you know, take care of me. And I say, you just said that's your best friend. Why would you want to impose upon him? Why don't you let him have his way? Let him have his career. And then maybe when it's over, you know, when, when he's finished with that and you can't hurt him in any way, then maybe, you know, he'll show you some grace. If you're his friend, why would you want to mess him up? Same thing here. You don't owe anything to anybody that is going to pull you back into the wrong way of life. Carlito made a big mistake here, and by the grace of God, he was able to escape, but otherwise he would have been locked up. You heard the sirens, the cops were coming because they heard the shots, but he gets away with it. So now, you know, Sean Penn, the lawyer, is offering a deal to Carlito. He tells him, look, there's a guy, this guy's name is Roy, I forget what his name before, he owns a club, and he's in trouble, he needs some money, and um, I'm gonna put up the money and you can become a partner in that club. Carlito says, no, I don't need your money, I'll put up my own, because when he left that club with the drug deal going down, he took the 30 grand, he took it off the table, so he went out at least with the money. So he tells Sean Penn, no, I'll do the deal myself. So he goes and meet with the guy at the club, you know, this guy, his name is Roy, who used to be something else, he's sitting down with him, and he says, what do you need a partner for? Turns out the guy has a gambling debt, he's into the mob guys, Needs a gambling debt. The Italians always get involved in these stories somehow. And uh, so anyway, Carlito makes a deal. I'm going to give you 25 grand. I'm going to be your partner. We're going 50-50. They make the deal. And now Carlito's got part of the club and he's going to run it and operate it. And he thinks that out of this deal, he's going to get his 75 grand and he's going to be able to go on with his life. That's his plan. So now we get a scene where Carlito's in the club and some guy doesn't want to pay the tab. One of the waiters comes over to him and says, hey, it's a guy that owes some uh, tab and he don't want to pay it. So Carlito goes over to him. His name is Benny Blanco. And he said, uh, hey, what's the deal? You don't want to pay your tab? And Benny says, well, you know, your partner owes me a lot of money. I'm just working it off. And Carlito says, no, 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 no. I'm partners here now. Everybody's got to pay. Benny Blanco starts to realize who Carlito was. He starts, oh, man, you're a legend. You're this, you're that, you know, all that. Carlito really doesn't want to hear it. He's not interested in any of that. Just pay your tab. So he kind of slights this guy, Benny, who's obviously street guy, drug dealer. And uh, he doesn't take it too well. But, you know, nothing goes down at that point in time. But it was a, a meeting that led to some real problems later on for Carlito. Now, Carlito is kind of sitting down. You know, you always have to have a relationship, a romance in all of these films. And uh, Carlito spots, you know, this woman dancing on the floor, really catches attention. And he starts to think about his old girlfriend, the girl that he was with before he went away and did his five years. Her name was Gail. And he's looking at her and he kind of recognizes her. After she leaves, it's raining out and he follows her. He follows her, you know, behind her. She doesn't know he's following her. And uh, he ends up on a rooftop and is watching her in a dance class. He eventually meets up with her, encounters her. She recognizes him. She calls him Charlie. And there goes the romantic side of the, uh, of the movie. And uh, obviously, Carlito is glad to be back with her. This was, you know, his former love. And uh, this romance starts. And as the movie goes on, he wants to be with her when he transforms his life. And this is the girl that he wants to settle down with. And she apparently is in love with him too. Okay, now things start to really heat up. Sean Penn, I gotta tell you, I mean, he even looks seedy in this movie, the curly hair, the whole thing, but he was a real, you know, what word you want to use, dirt bag, whatever. He was not a good person at all. And uh, apparently um, he goes to visit a mob guy in Rikers Island. And this mob guy sits down with him and they're talking. And apparently the mob guy gave Sean Penn a million dollars to give to a witness who was going to testify against the mob guy to buy his silence. Well, Sean Penn decides that he's not doing that. He keeps the million dollars. He rips off the mob boss. 
and they're having this conversation and the boss says, hey, I know exactly what you did. I'll have you dead in two minutes. I mean, he goes into the whole thing. He says, but you're going to help me. I'm going to escape Rikers Island. Sean Penn, how the heck do you escape? Basically, he comes up with a plot where one of the prison guards, one of the jail guards that he knows is going to help him get out of the prison and get onto a buoy in the river. And Sean Penn was going to go with the mob guy's son and pick him up at a certain time in a boat. That was the plan. And he tells Sean Penn, if you don't do it, you'll be dead in a second. He said, all I got to do is put the word on you and you're done. And you're done because you ripped him off. He tells Sean Penn, you're going to do this. And if not, I'm going to put the word out on you. You'll be dead before you know it. So Sean Penn leaves there. He's outside. He's throwing up. He's scared. He doesn't know what to do. But now, you know, he's either going to face death or he's going to help this mob guy escape Rikers Island. Is that realistic? No. I mean, I don't think anybody's ever done that. But, you know, it's just a good plot in the movie. So now things are really starting to, uh, to fall apart here, in my opinion. You know, Sean Penn's got his trouble with the mob. And now we got Carlito in a club, bad place, bad environment. You're trying to transform your life. You don't go into the nightclub business where, you know, you got all sorts of characters coming into that place. You were a known guy at one point in time. Why again are you going back into the den? I know he needs to earn money. There had to be a different way. So anyway, we have another scene there where, um, you know, Carlito encounters an old friend of his, guy that's uh, probably, uh, you know, was on the street with him. He's in a wheelchair. His life is going down the tubes. He's really, uh, you know, he's just a mess. And he's talking to Carlito and asking for his help and trying to get him involved in another kind of drug deal. Carlito smells something that isn't right here. He finds out. He pulls uh, the guy apart. He's wired. Guy was working with the DA. Got himself in trouble and, uh, you know, didn't want to go back to jail. So he makes a deal. Get Carlito and I give you a pass. Carlito is upset, obviously. Pachanga comes in, wants to kill him. You're a rat. Carlito stops him again because uh, he's really trying to make a break. But again, you know, back in the lion's den. So he pulls out a gun and uh, the guy thinks he's going to get killed. He says, go ahead, kill me. Guy's saying, I'm in a wheelchair. I can't walk. I can't do anything right. Shoot me. I don't care. Carlito's not going to shoot him. He just tells him, you know, just, just stay out of my life. He leaves there, you know, another encounter. Everybody he meets is putting him in a bad way. Carlito is sitting with Sean Penn again, with Pachanga, and Benny Blanco comes over. They exchange some words. Carlito insults him again. Benny Blanco says, you insulted me for again. You know, they start to get physical. He jumps over the table because he wants the girl that's sitting with Carlito. It's a whole mess. Long story short, they go to work on this guy, Benny Blanco. They give him a beating. Pachanga does. Carlito is seen where he's just telling him off, who the heck do you think you are? You know, I don't owe you anything. He threatens, he says, if I see you again, I'm going to kill you. Benny Blanco says, I'm going to kill you. Carlito throws him down the stairs. He gets down to the bottom of the stairway. They go after him. Pachanga wants to kill him. There was a scene outside of the club in the back in the alley. And uh, Pachanga says, we got to kill him. Now, I'm going to tell you this, people. The way of the street, and again, I'm not, you know, I'm not okaying this. I'm not saying I agree with it today, but the way of the street, when somebody's threatening you and you have an altercation like that, you got to get rid of the guy. You can't let him come back for another day. But Carlito, again, you know, trying to, you know, redeem himself, trying to transform himself, can't do it being in a lion's den and having all of these encounters that are so dangerous for you, you know, you just can't do it. He decides not to kill him. Let him go. You know, just let him go. It turned out to be a bad mistake. You know, as we get further along, you'll find that out. But that's not the way of the street, man. If you're going to be on the street, you're on the street. You got to do your street stuff. You can't have one foot in and one foot out. And that was what Carlito was trying to do. He was trying to use the street to get him into a position where he can transform his life and get out of the street. Doesn't work that way. Wouldn't have worked that way for me. I would have never lasted. Wouldn't have worked that way. And it certainly isn't working for him. You know, I certainly understand, you know, when he met, you know, Gail again, um, that certainly gave him more motivation to, you know, transform his life and to get out of the street life. And, you know, that's a similar story to mine. You know, I met a young girl. She was 20 years old. She's now my wife of 37 years. And she inspired me even more. You know, in my life, fortunately, I didn't go back into the lion's den because I knew I could never make it if I went back out on the street. And if I tried to use the street to help me to get out of my life, uh, to get out of that life and, and, and move on, it would have never worked. You just can't do it. 
So Gail didn't want him in that life, obviously, and certainly my wife didn't want me in that life. Um, but I can certainly relate to what Carlito went through at that point in time. And, um, you know, it's sad. You know, the whole thing, the way it worked out for him was very sad. But, you know, he, he, he just made bad mistakes in trying to transform his life. He made bad mistakes. So now we see a scene where he's with uh, Sean Penn, and Sean Penn now tells him what he's got to do for this mob guy. He says, look, if I don't break him out of prison, I'm going to get killed. And you owe me, Carlito. You have to help me. You need to come with me. You need to be on that boat with me. You need to help me. Carlito, once again, for some reason, he can't resist this guy. He didn't realize at this point in time that this guy, this lawyer, was nuts. He didn't owe him this. Not in any way, shape, or form. Didn't owe him anything. When you're looking to walk away from a criminal lifestyle, you don't owe anybody anything when they want to pull you back in. At least that's my perspective. Somebody may disagree with me. That's my perspective. And if you have a friend that cares about you, they're not going to try to do that. But this lawyer, Sean Penn, CD as can be, he convinces Carlito, this is the one last time, you got to help me, that's it. So Carlito agrees again, reluctantly, but he agrees. Every, every move he made in this film was a mistake, every move. So now, next scene, they're out on the boat, mobster's son. They're going to go pick up the mobster, uh, the mob boss, who was taken to a buoy by the jail guard that was helping him out. It's at night, and uh, there's three people on the boat. Carlito's there, Sean Penn, and the mobster's son. They get near the buoy. Now, what Carlito doesn't know is that Sean Penn had a different idea. There was no way he was giving that million dollars back. No way. He probably spent it. Who knows? But he was greedy. He wasn't going to do it, right? So they pull near the mob guy. Carlito's out there holding something so that the mob guy can grab it to pull him on the boat. Sean Penn comes down. He's got the mob guy's son driving the boat. He comes down. He says, Carlito, I'll take it from here. I'll pull him up. You go in and make sure the boat is being driven the right way. Anyway, at that point in time, Sean Penn, he kills the mob guy. He starts hitting him with the, whatever it was, that he, the bat or whatever he had, and he starts hitting him across the head. He kills the guy. He had also killed the mob guy's son. Killed them both. Lost his mind. Crazy scene. This guy believed that he was a mob guy. I don't know what, what the heck happened to him, but he wasn't giving up that million dollars. Carlito goes crazy on him. Are you out of your mind? Do you know what you did? Do you know who these guys are? They're going to figure this out. They're not stupid. He goes crazy, right? Really, really upset with him. Anyway, it's done. Mob guy's dead. Mob guy's son. They throw him overboard, dead. Carlito knows it's only a matter of time now. He said, these, these mafia guys are not stupid, and uh, they're going to figure this out. I got to get out of town. I got to leave. Now it's urgent. Another scene now, he's sitting down with his partner in the club, and the partner lets him know that Pachanga, his good friend, is turning on him, is betraying him. He's not making any money. He's upset about that. Of course, you don't make money in that life. You don't keep a lot of loyalty. Trust me. So he's now siding with Benny Blanco, this guy Pachanga. So everything is caving down on this guy. Everything is caving down on Carlito. Sean Penn is in a hospital. Carlito goes to see him. He's had it with him. He says, you're a dead man, you're done, you're finished, but I'm going to help you out one last time. He gives him a gun. He says, in case anybody's going to come and kill you, here, yeah, I'll give you a gun. Gives it to Sean Penn in the hospital, right? What Sean Penn doesn't know is that he took all the bullets out. The other mob guy's son, dressed as a cop, comes into the hospital, goes into Sean Penn's room because he was under guard by the police. He goes into his room, and uh, Sean Penn says to him, what are you doing here? The shift didn't change yet. He says, no, I'm here for my father. He pulls out a gun. Sean Penn pulls out his gun, doesn't realize there's no bullets in it. The mob guy's son, dressed as a cop, kills him. Sean Penn is done. Bullet in the head, finished. Now Carlito's got to get out of town. He's desperately looking for money. He wants to get a hold of Gail. He tells her we're going to meet at the train station. We're out of here. And now the mob guys have picked up on the fact that Carlito was also on that boat. They're after him. There's a big chase scene. As Carlito is trying to get out of town, trying to get to the boat, he tells Pachanga, have Gail meet me at the train station. I'm out of here. He doesn't remember or something. I don't know what happened. He doesn't remember that uh, Pachanga's already betraying him with uh, Benny Blanco. They get to the train station. Gail is at the train. They're ready to board. As Carlito evades the mob guys and gets up to the door of the train where Gail is waiting, Benny Blanco comes up. Remember me? Boom. Shoots him in the stomach. He goes down. Gail is in tears. That's it. They didn't make it. Pachanga, who's standing there, the one that betrayed him, says, sorry, man. I had to go where the money is, you know. Sorry. 
And he said, he tells uh, Benny Blanco, let's go now. Benny Blanco says, no, you stay here. Boom. He shoots Pachanga. He knows Pachanga's not a, not a loyal guy. Why would he keep him with him? He just betrayed his good friend. Why wouldn't he betray him later on? It's the way of the street. And that's it. And they're gone. So what happened? You know, to wrap this whole thing up, Carlito, we believe, dies. We don't see him dead, but he's on his way out. He did everything wrong in this movie. Everything. There's no question that Carlito wanted to transform his life. He didn't want to go back into that, you know, same criminal lifestyle that got him in trouble. He was looking to make a break. But the moral of the story is this. You are who you hang out with. Even if you're trying to do the right thing, like Carlito was, the people that he was hanging with drew him back into doing the wrong thing. You can't make a step forward in your life when you go backward to try to do that. So the mistake that he made throughout this film was going back into the neighborhood, meeting up with the same kind of guys, you know, giving in to Sean Penn, the attorney, to help him out, you know, in a deal he should have never got involved with, getting back in with his cousin, trying to do him a favor, getting, you know, into that situation where you had to kill people again, a drug deal. You just can't do it. If you're going to make a break in life, you got to make a break. You can't have one foot in and one foot out. Even when you're trying to do the right thing, it's just not going to work out. The temptation is too strong. You know, for whatever reason that you have in your head, you got to make a break. I certainly can relate to that. Um, I had to make a clean break. You know, when you, you walk away from a criminal lifestyle and the life that I was in where I had taken a blood oath, it was very hard to change that mentality. And if I had kept myself in it in any way and been under that influence, I don't think I would have been able to do it. No way. You got to hang with the people that care about you, that want to put you on the right path, keep you in the right direction. You don't do what Carlito did. Ended up bad for him. And if you're trying to transform your life, if you've been in a situation similar to Carlito, did some time, did some bad things in your life, you want to make a break, you got to go and make a break. One foot in, one foot out doesn't work. For me, it was all about my wife, my mother-in-law, my faith, and my family. God helped me make this transformation. Hopefully he'll do the same for you, for those of you that are listening in. So that's it for today. You know, great movie. If you haven't seen it, go online. You can get it, I'm sure, just about anywhere. And hopefully you enjoyed the message. That's it. We're at 400,000 subscribers. Remember, 500,000 is the big giveaway. Can't give it away right now, but we're getting close. And hopefully within the next couple of months, we'll reach that. MichaelFrancis.com. The community is growing. People are just encouraging one another. I encourage you to jump on. It's free. You don't have to pay anything. There is an upper level. If you want more involvement with me, more personal coaching on life and business, then you jump up a little bit. Still not going to break the bank, but you're in that. So that's about it. Got a lot of good things coming. Tyson coming up. We have Escobar Jr. coming up. We've got Donnie Brasco coming up. So a lot of good things planned. And I hope you'll stay tuned. We appreciate the loyalty and all of those that are just coming in for this first time. Thank you. Next week or so, we got a whole new platform that we're opening up that we're going to talk about uh, that I think is going to be exciting for many of you. So that's it. How do I always leave you, my friends? Be safe. Be healthy. God bless you. And I will see you next time.